We are putting moss poles to the test plant, friends. This is unsponsored. I have paid for all of these with my own money. And we're going to see what the best moss pole is out there for you. Growing joy. Plant friends, I feel like I need to give you a disclaimer about this video. We're shooting in a greenhouse and it's probably 80 degrees and I'm so sweaty. So let's get down to business. I'm so excited about this video, but I've also been scared about this video because it requires taking apart my epic monsteras that have been on moss poles. If you've subscribed to me for a while, you know that I have a make your own moss pole video on YouTube. It's done very well. People love the idea of having moss poles for their plants for a variety of reasons. Number one, aesthetically, they can kind of give you this like wild jungle vibe. A lot of the tropical plants that we grow actually climb up trees in the jungle. And so moss poles allow our plants to climb up something. So instead of tumbling out and over the pot, they can climb up. And usually if you trellis a plant to a moss pole, you'll see that the leaves will get larger. Sometimes they'll often get fenestrated. If you keep your moss poles moist, the moisture creates a local raise in humidity for your plant. And the moisture will help activate the aerial roots along the vines. And the aerial roots will then attach to the moss pole and the plant will begin trellising itself. And you'll notice once you see those aerial roots start attaching, the leaves are going to take off. They're going to get bigger. You're going to get more fenestrations. It's like a signal to the plant that it's secure. So I made these moss poles eight years ago, seven years ago, they've done a great job. But now that I've had them for so long, I've realized there are a couple of pain points for me about moss poles. So I decided to buy all the best moss poles on the market and one that's a fourth of the price on Amazon and put them to the test. So with these moss poles, I love the aesthetic of them. I love the natural kind of raw mossy element that they bring, especially I feel like it matches my terracotta pot but they do not stay moist. I don't have humidifiers in my house. So you have to sometimes water your moss poles as much as you have to water your plants. And frankly, these moss poles will dry out faster than my soil will. So if you're a mindful plant parent and you don't wanna overwater your plants, having moss poles is great because you can actually water the moss pole instead of the soil. But I think we've hit a limit. Also, these plants are getting really large. So we're going to re-trellis them with three different products. So this is the Super Trellis pre-filled moss pole. It comes like this. The moss is already in it. It has this cool kind of system that you attach. We're going to install it. Then this is the one that I'm super excited to check. They've I've seen them in plant shops and online a lot. This is Mossify. It's a bendable moss pole. So you can make cool shapes with it. And it has an anchor because what I have found is as my plants get bigger and bigger, I find like this plant in particular, you can see like no matter what I do, the weight of the plants makes the moss pole tip over. So I'm very excited to see if this stone anchor that the Mossify pole comes with is helpful. And then because I want to have price points for everyone here and like these both were in the $50 range, I got this on Amazon for like $17 and it is also stackable. And we're gonna rate these products with three different approaches. Aesthetic, so does it look pretty in the pot? Moisture, does the moss pole maintain its moisture or is it gonna be the same thing and dry out like this? Durability, meaning is it gonna probably tip over when my plants get really big? I also feel like this is a caveat. A lot of moss poles with the tipping over, like these are epic plants. So this is moss poles for really large plants. And then honestly, my plants are so unruly, I might end up just taking some cuttings at the end, particularly this Rafa defura tetrasperma. It's like, it's such a prolific grower. I'm obsessed with this plant. If you want a prolific grower and you want something to climb all over your house, this is a great option because I've had it on this trellis and it just keeps growing in circles and circles and circles. So we're going to do the type of method where I'm going to put this plant in a larger pot and then we're going to put that plant in this plant's pot and then we're going to put that plant in this plant's pot. So let's begin with this bad boy. Um, I don't know when I gave it its second moss pole, but these are the original moss poles I made that original video for. Um, let's take this plant down, repot it, and I'll be right back with the plant in its new pot to show you how we install this super trellis. All right, so this plant has been potted in the same soil for multiple years. So I'm gonna shake off some of the soil and give it a little bit of a soil refresh as well. It's not too pot bound, I'm actually kind of surprised. I was anticipating it to be in worse shape than it actually is. 
but I watered it yesterday and there are definitely some dry patches of soil. Also, you're totally welcome to leave aerial roots on your plant, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to remove the aerial roots because I just kind of want like a clean, I want a clean canvas to just like even figure out what I'm working with and how many, how many um, different vines that we have. All right, so I'm going to plant this really deep in the back of the pot. And then it's pre-filled with moss. I love that it comes with this cone to help water it. But I'm pretty sure that if I want to build the extender, I just fill this with moss. And then I slip this into this. Come on. And it should slide. Okay. Okay. Oh, I see a tip, but maybe the tipping will stop when we... I'm going to fold these in since it's the base. Put it all the way down. Okay. Let's backfill and see how tight I can get this, and then we will trellis it. All right. So my first impressions of just like the installation... After I've planted this up, it feels pretty sturdy. I don't love the aesthetic, but I'm hoping that this plant is so big that it'll kind of hide a lot of it. So this was a very simple installation and it feels way more solid than the moss pole that it was on. I also love that it literally has a little filter at the top of the moss pole. You fill this with water and then it will drip water into the moss and keep the moss hydrated. This is actually my favorite aspect of the moss pole because my biggest pain point is keeping my moss poles wet. So I'm going to give stability. I'm going to give this thing is holding this monstera up pretty good. So I'm going to give stability an 8.5 8 out of 10. I'm going to give keeping the moss pole moist, like moisture retention, a 10 out of 10. On the aesthetic side, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. I don't love the plastic vibe of this. Like, I really do like the moss pole aesthetic. Like, I like lo having it look like it's climbing something natural. I don't love that it's this white plastic. But at least, like, these ties are see-through. And the, my plant is so robust that it's going to hide the plastic for the most part as it keeps growing. I don't think I would use this on a smaller plant because then you would end up seeing more of the plastic. So... That is the review for Super Trellis. But I am very excited to see if I could keep this moist and to see what that moisture brings for my Monstera. And it just feels so much tidier and less unruly. So next, we're going to put this Monstera in the old pot. So let's swap it out. All right. Monstera number two is going to have... Did I just give myself a soil mustache? <laughs> okay. We're sweating through this plant, friends. We're sweating through. Next up, this Monstera has also grown so happy. I'm starting to see more and more fenestrations as it climbs up the moss pole. But man, no matter what I do, it's just like totally wonky and so not the vibe. But this is a great example of an aerial root that came out of here, has rooted into the soil. And if I was to pull this up, which I'm not going to right now, it probably has all sorts of root branching and it's totally like made its new home there. So let's get this guy out and into its new pot. So this is the $17 moss pole I got on Amazon because I wanted to have all price points. Let me tell you, I ordered it. It says moss poles, six pieces. However, when I look at it, it's actually pure natural coconut fiber. Is that just more sustainable? I actually don't know, but it's not moss. So in terms of like hydrating this, I'm curious. I'm definitely curious. This is how it works. So it shows up with six of these pieces. So you could make a moss pole that touches the sky. It could be like six feet tall. These little thingies come in here. You take them out. You go like this. You go like this. You have your moss pole. What I have found is sometimes it's helpful if you can anchor your moss pole in the drainage hole of the pot. So as I plant this new planter up, I'm going to locate one of the drainage holes, stick my finger in it, then I'm going to find it. Yes. Okay. So I'm hoping that helps. And instead of putting the moss pole at the, in the middle of the planter, I'm going to put it at the back and I'm going to hope that it helps. I don't know. I'm a little skeptical. How tall do we think? Do we need another one? Well, the beauty of this is we can still add. So let's start with this. Let's start backfilling the plant and see what, see what, how, where to go from there.
All right. So this moss ball set came with this Velcro. So how does this work? It's going to go like this and then it sticks on itself. Oh, that's nice. Okay, cool. So I guess this will blend in with the green stems of the plant. I'm going to take a healthy amount of Velcro and I think we are going to build just the way we did with the other one. I'm going to loop these guys around like this and do a separate Velcro because they're going to hit it lower like this. And now this guy is standing up tall. These guys are okay. What I think I'm going to do is include this leaf with this stem in the next one to make sure that everything keeps growing tall. So we need one more. All right. For 17 bucks, I'm surprised. I was anticipating I wasn't going to like this as much as I do. I don't love the, the the way the green Velcro looks against the moss pole from an aesthetic standpoint. I prefer the look of the cocoa coir than the plastic of the super trellis, but I wish this was see-through and not green because then it like bumps up against the moss. Maybe I, I might swap this out for fishing line down the line, but from a sturdy standpoint, it's really sturdy. And I love that as this keeps growing, all I have to do is add another one up there and this can just keep going up, 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 up or you get six of these in one pack. So if this was to grow more, I could even make a second moss pole and I could put it in here to give it two supports, or I could just make another moss pole for another plant, which is a really good value. For aesthetics, I'm gonna give this a 6.5 out of 10 because I like the look of the cocoa coir, but you know, you see this is a pretty jarring line. I don't love the the Velcro. No, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 because I think it looks great. Stability-wise, 9 out of 10 again. Um, Moisture-wise, I think this is going to be the worst of the three. I am going to have to play around and test how wet this can get and how long it can stay wet. But it's not moss. It's cocoa coir. So I'm going to give that a 4 out of 10 and we'll just kind of see. I don't even see a real way that you could water this. Like maybe I would have to spray it. With these old moss poles, I could literally hold my watering can up to the moss pole and rehydrate the moss. This is packed so tightly. I don't really see how I'm going to be able to do that. So maybe if I put the plant in a shower, it would work. But from aesthetics and stability, I feel really good about it. And I feel like this plant just got a major facelift. On to the next. This is Raffi, my Raffidophora tetrasperma. Such a vigorous grower. I love this plant. I highly recommend it. I had him be training on this really chic, beautiful metal moss pole, but as the plant has gotten bigger, it's just not enough. So I thought because this plant is so big, we will try the mossify moss pole with the anchor and still make like a cool shape to try and train him. So stay tuned, but first let's repot him. So this mossify pole has a stone anchor on it, which I'm so curious about. We are going to get it at the bottom of the pot. So a cool thing that I like about this is it's a zero plastic product. So this is all moss and it sends uh, floral pins. This is actually my favorite way to attach a plant to a moss pole. They're pins that you will like insert into the moss pole and kind of anchor them that way. So let's figure out how this is going to look. Uh-oh, I heard a snap. Oh, no. That's a bummer. Well, we'll take props from that. Frankly, this is going to be way more manageable now. So you take the floral pin. You put the pin on either side of the out stem. And then you just pin it into the moss pole. It allows for a more comfortable plant situation. And I like that the moss pole is going to kind of dance around this stem. I will say, be careful. I'm definitely sticking myself a little bit. Oh, look, this curve matches this curve. You can curve it into whatever style you want. All right. Well, 
<laughs> PSA, when trellising your plants, be careful because you snap it and then you ruin a whole plant. So this is actually going to be great because now that I've potted this up into a larger pot, I'm going to prop, cut this up and prop them all in water. And then once they have roots, I'm going to fill out the base of the pot to make it a little bit more of a robust plant. Also, Raphidophora tetrasperma are such vigorous growers, like I'm not worried. As you can see, it's already at the top of the moss pole. So I'm not really that stressed because now since this isn't extendable, I'm going to have to prune at the top anyway. So, okay, a few things about this planter. On a stability purpose, I'm actually a little disappointed. I was really excited about the stone anchor, and I find that this is still moving. I almost feel like the anchor needs to be larger in order for the stability to happen because this is a big planter. I really packed the soil down. I just expected it to be more sturdy, honestly. However, what we have found is because it's bendable, you can bend to kind of offset the weight. So at first I had it bending too much that way. And I realized once I bent it this way, like you can kind of, you know, Tetris, like yoga pose your way into figuring it out. The other thing about the pole being bendable, which is cool, is the vines have these natural built-in curves already. So you're able to like, if you see right here, this vine has this C shape already. So I was able to make a C shape to ha kind of have it match. I feel like from an aesthetic point of view, this is a 10 out of 10. I think this is aesthetically like the best out of all three. I love the natural look of the moss. I love the natural twine. I love the height. I love that you can shape it. It's like you see these natural shapes in nature. So I love that. From a moistening perspective, it's moss. So it, it's not going to be as good as the super trellis because it doesn't have that funnel, but it's going to be way better than the coca coir. I'm going to give it like an a seven out of 10. It's going to be very similar to the other moss poles that I had. You're going to have to water them or you're going to have to spritz them to keep them moist. Um, and then from a stability standpoint, you know, it's wiggling. So I think I'm going to give it like a four or five out of 10 for stability, but I do feel like it, it makes up for it in the ability to have it be bendable. But here they are. I frankly think it looks incredible. I mean, all three of these, this is such a glow up. Like this is such a major glow up from what these plants used to look like. What do you think you might be purchasing? I'll put the links to all of these. Like I said, this is not sponsored. I paid for all of these with my own money. At the point that I bought these, these two were both in the $50, $60 range. And then that one was, I think like $17 or $18 on Amazon, but we'll put links to everything. If the companies reach out and offer a coupon code, I'll happily update it in, in the show notes as well. I'm keeping them all. I'm definitely not going to return any of them. These all work great and they all have different purposes from a moisture standpoint, from an aerial root standpoint, from a humidity standpoint, super trellis takes it, from an aesthetic standpoint, mossify takes it, and from an affordability standpoint and maybe a stability standpoint, uh, Amazon might take it. So... Yeah, pluses and minuses to each one. This was a fun product. Are there any other planty products you want me to do something like this with? I was thinking it might be fun to do trellises that aren't moss-based. Or I don't know, if you have products you want me to try, I'm here for you, plant friends. I'm here to make sure that we kind of cut cut through the, the noise on the internet and make sure that you get high-quality products and high-quality plants because I am here to help you keep growing joy.